Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. Today, I will be reading from the r slash entitled people subreddit. So let's jump into it. I don't care that you're dead. This literally just happened. My neighbor's mom went into cardiac arrest and they had ambulances, cops, firemen, paramedics, etc. filling up the street. Sadly, she passed only a few minutes after they got there. Kids are crying, dad is crying, we are crying, and Q entitled B with an itch other neighbor. She goes up and has this exchange with the ambulance driver. How long are you gonna be here? I have work at 4.30. We're not sure, ma'am. We're in the middle of trying to save her life. I don't care. You're blocking the road and I have to go to work. <sighs> I was astounded that anyone could be so cold and so unfeeling right in front of the family themselves. It's not like she has an important job like a doctor or something that needs her. She literally works some crappy wage job and lives in a trailer. <laughs> What the actual? All she had to do was call her boss and tell them that she'd be late due to a neighborhood emergency and an ambulance blocking the path. Even take a picture of the ambulance as proof. That's it. But when there's one entitled bee with an itch, there's always another. And when this one goes, I'm sure there will just be another one stepping over her corpse to get to Taco Bell. Fake suicide threat backfires. I used to play in an orchestra for many years. We had a new trumpet player joining us. He was well in his 30s and had just moved to the area. I was 18 years old at the time and was preparing to move to another city to start university. As we had a group chat, he got his hands on my phone number. He would then start texting me, complaining about how he didn't know anybody and how he was so lonely. He would also start complimenting me and asking me out. I declined, told him I was not interested, and kept my polite distance. But I probably should have been more insisting. It got so bad that one night, when I was taking the train back from a trip to my new hometown, approximately 500 kilometers, night trains were cheap. Cheaper. He would terrorize via phone by calling me non-stop at 4 a.m. and threatening to commit suicide if I didn't go out with him. He would tell me he was walking towards train tracks, that he was drinking, and that he would just end it all now. I didn't fully believe him, but I couldn't be sure, so I called the police and made them check on him. The officers were very understanding, and I gave them a detailed description of him, his name, and his current address. Surprise, surprise, they found that little bitch sitting at home. They warned him that they would take him to psychiatry for a nice and cozy 24-hour stay if he dared to pull that stunt again. After they left, he freaked out on me, calling me all kinds of names, telling me that it had all been a joke and how could I be so stupid not to see that? Yada yada yada. He threatened violence and I contemplated calling the authorities again to take up their offer on filing a report against him, which I had declined earlier. The next day, he started texting our orchestra group chat, implying that we had a sexual relationship and that I broke his heart by being a whore, etc. He also wanted the others to decide because it had to be either him or me staying as he was too hurt to be in my presence. Nobody believed him. The conductor called me to check on me and to ask whether I wanted the organizers of the orchestra to take action or whether I needed help with anything. They had already decided on kicking him out for harassment. Dude lost his only social connections, made a fool of himself in a very small town, and now has an internal memo with the police department for what he pulled. The word of the day today, kids, is coercive. <laughs> When someone threatens to harm themselves in hopes to force someone else to do something, that is coercive manipulation. Which is not cool. Don't do that. If someone is not interested or doesn't want to do something, just leave them alone. That boy reeks of desperation. And I'm glad OP called the police on him. He fully set himself up for that one and was well deserving of what happened. 
Entitled father steals money as payment for a good deed. I was working at the tills at my supermarket, serving customers during the school rush. It was around 4 p.m. I had just got done serving an elderly gentleman and was now serving a middle-aged man and his daughter. The previous customer was stood to the side putting away his loyalty card and bank card when I noticed he had dropped his bank card instead of putting it away. The father who I was serving, now referred to as Entitled Dad, quickly ran over and grabbed his card. I assumed he was going to return it, but instead he ran back to the till and tapped the old man's card on the reader to pay for his shopping before grabbing his items and running after the old man. I had no customers after ED, so I approached the two as they were talking and overheard the entitled dad saying, You dropped your card back there, mate. Can't be losing that. He then promptly handed over the card and turned to walk away. I intervened and told the old man that ED had used his card to pay for his shopping. I also waved to our on-duty security guard to stop the ED, which he did. Myself and the old man walked down to the entitled dad and I asked him to stay put while I called a manager down. ED played dumb spouting, you have no right to stop me. I need to get my daughter home. This is false imprisonment etc. Once the manager arrived, I explained what happened, and this scumbag of a person had the audacity to say, I could have kept his card and used a lot more. Is that what you want me to do? He shouldn't be complaining about shit. I only used a bit. He then turned to the old man and said something equally disgusting. Just consider it compensation for giving it back to you. At this point, the old man was asking if he could get his money back. I headed back to my till and printed a copy of the last receipt, took the old man to the customer service desk, got his transaction refunded, and he was happy to leave there. He didn't want to press charges for theft or anything like that. We made Entitled Dad pay for his shopping, and he stormed off. And yes, he is now banned from the store. What a dick. Yes, but he could have been more of a dick. Pray he doesn't grow any girthier. This is the only situation I could possibly ever want to see this sentiment expressed. Darth Choder. <laughs> hmm, I wonder if Entitled Dad's name was Richard? But anyways, that is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed those three Entitled People stories. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I truly appreciate when you do, and I will see you in the next Reddit story. Bye!